Hey everyone, this is Mark from Viperfish. Welcome to the second devlog for our new game, Underground. In the last video, I created a new project in Unity 2020. I added a tile map and implemented some basic player movement. This time, I'll be looking at generating maps of tiles programmatically using procedural generation. Procedurally generated content is arguably the defining feature of the roguelike genre. It helps to provide the player with a fresh challenge each time they start a run. For now, I'll be starting with two extremely simple algorithms in order to lay down a foundation for the map systems that I can build upon in the future. The first will be a random walk process, which will choose a random direction to move in after each floor section is added. The second will build upon the first, generating a hallway and then a room, before choosing a random direction and repeating this process. Before I get into procedural generation, I'll need to make some modifications to the project. In order to get the player icon to sit inside of a tile unit, I'd previously moved the tile map's parent grid object up and to the right by 0.5 of a unit. This has moved the tile located at 0, 0 relative to the grid, away from the player whose position is 0, 0 relative to the root of the scene. So I'll move the grid object down and to the left by minus 0.5 of a unit instead. This will place the player icon inside the tile located at 0, 0 relative to the grid aligning the player and tile positions. Another thing I'd like to do is to make the camera move when the player moves. I can do this by dragging the main camera object inside of the player object. While I'm here, I'll change the camera's background color to black, just to make everything look a little more like my mock-up. You can now see that the camera is moving with the player keeping the player icon in the center of the screen at all times. Since the player and tile positions are now aligned, I can simplify my code slightly by changing the key that gets saved when I add a game tile to the dictionary to the local position of the tile instead of the world position. This means I don't need to calculate the target tile position from the player target position before checking if the player can move. I could just use the player target position, since they're one and the same. I'm going to be generating the tiles on the tile map at runtime using code, so we won't be needing the tiles that I drew on the map in the last video. I'll delete them all with the eraser tool. And now, since there are no tiles on the map, my get game tiles function won't have any tiles to get. So I'll delete the call in the awake function and delete the function itself too. It's now time to set the stage for the procedural generation of the tiles. First, I'll create a seed integer and a random seed boolean. I'll be using these later on to allow us to reproduce any level that we've generated procedurally. I then create a floor size integer to control the size of each floor section that we lay down. This is essentially the number of tile layers surrounding a central tile. A value of one, for example, will create a floor section of three by three tiles. Total floor count will set the maximum amount of floor tiles that we can add before we have to stop creating new elements. Floor list will store a list of all the floor tile positions that make up our map. The floor tile and wall tile variables will reference our tile objects so we can place them onto the tile map. And Cavern's Blueprint will be an instance of a Cavern's Blueprint class that I'll create in a moment, which will encapsulate the random walk algorithm. 
I'll add this new class component onto the same object as the Tile Manager instance so I can get access to it and its functions by using get component. When written, the random walker function will kick off the procedural generation of the map. I'll now write an add tile function, which will pretty much do what you'd expect. It takes a position and a tile type and sets a tile on the tile map. before creating a game tile instance. Which it places in the tiles dictionary. The random direction function returns a random vector that takes the floor size into account. The return value can be up, down, left or right. The in floor list function loops through the floor list. and checks to see if the given value has already been added to the list. I then write a create blueprint coroutine, which loops through the floor list, adding each floor tile and surrounding them with wall tiles. Yield return new wait for seconds allows me to slow down the creation of the map so that I can see each tile being added. This helps me to debug possible problems with its generation. Now it's time to write the first algorithm, which will generate a list of floor positions using a random walker function. I'll create a new c -sharp script called Cavern's Blueprint. We won't be needing the update function, and I'll change the start function to use monobehavior's await function instead. I create a reference to our tile manager instance, which I'll set using get component. I'll then write a random walker function. I set a local vector3 int variable to 00. zero and add it as the starting position in the tile manager's floor list. Depending on the floor size value, I want to add a number of tile layers around this first tile. So I'll loop through all of the offset positions using the floor size value, and then add those offsets to the current position. If any of those positions aren't currently in the floor list, then I'll add them to the list. While the number of positions in the floor list is less than the total floor count, I'll set the current position to move in a random direction, and then loop through its offset positions using the floor size value as before. adding each offset to the current position. I'll add them into the floor list if they're not there already. Once the floor list is complete, 
I then start the Create Blueprint coroutine to set each tile onto the tile map and record them as a game tile object in the tiles dictionary. Then I'll drag the Caverns Blueprint script onto the grid object in the hierarchy. Lock the inspector and drag the floor and wall tile assets into the reference variable fields. I set random seed to true, change the floor size to 1, and set the total floor count to 2000. To test this out, I'll increase the size of the camera to get a wider view of the map. As you can see, the tile map is being randomly populated with tiles, which makes for an almost organic looking space. I'll probably use this blueprint for any levels that take place in caves, forests, or other natural environments. If I put the camera size back to what it was, you can see a bit more of an accurate representation of what gameplay would look like. So, let's hook up that random seed checkbox so that we can reproduce any level that we've generated procedurally. Unity's random number generator is not truly random. It produces numbers in a preset sequence. In the tile manager script, I'll first check to see if random seed is true. If so, I'll set seed to a random number between 0 and 99,999. Then I use random.initState to set the point in the sequence of pseudo random numbers. If I set random seed to false and enter a value of 42 as the seed, you'll see that the map produced will now be the same no matter how many times we hit play. But if I set random seed to true, then we get a totally different map. And the seed is now a randomly selected number. Also, if I change the floor size to three, each floor section is now much bigger than before. So let's move on to the second algorithm, generating a hallway and then a room before choosing a random direction and repeating this process. I'll create a new c -sharp script called Dungeon Blueprint. This will start out in exactly the same way as the Caverns Blueprint, so I'll copy the code over. I'll change the function name from random walker to room walker and delete everything inside the while loop. After the first floor section has been placed at 00, zero and while the number of positions in the floor list is less than the total floor count, I'll set the current position to a position determined by a new walker function, which I'll write in a moment. I'll then kick off another new function called random room, which I'll also be writing soon. Now for the walker function, I'll set a random direction as walk direction and a random length as walk length. I've currently made it so that the larger the floor size is, the shorter the length of the hallway will be. I loop a number of times defined by walk length and update the current position 
by a predetermined walk direction. Then I loop through its offset positions, using the floor size value as before, adding each offset to the current position and then adding it to the floor list if it's not in there already. I've repeated this for loop a number of times now, so I should probably break it out into its own function in the future. I then return the final position at the end of the hallway. Now, let's write the random room function. I set a random width and height in which the parameters will be bigger as the floor size increases. And then do a variation of that loop, the one I've done too many times now. It takes the offset positions and puts them in the floor list. I need to make a few adjustments to the Tile Manager script so that I can swap between the different blueprints at will. I create a blueprint type enum containing the values caverns and dungeon and make an instance of this so that I can select from this set of values in the inspector. I add a reference to the new dungeon blueprint class and get the component in the awake function. Then I'll write a switch statement to check our blueprint type choice, which will run the relevant functions that create the floor list. And I won't be needing that call to the random walker function, so I'll delete it. Now, I'll drag the dungeon blueprint script onto the grid object. And select dungeon as the blueprint type in the inspector. There you go. The hallways are probably a little too small for the room sizes, but it works. I'll zoom the camera in to get a better idea of what gameplay may look like. Okay, I've taken the first steps towards implementing procedural generation in the game. The foundation is now in place for me to add as many blueprint algorithms as I'll need in the future. Underground is still very early on in its development, so I'll be continuing my work on the game in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.